Did you work when you were a kid? My dad was usually away working at that time, you know, because he was a, a, a. When I was growing up, he was a singer, so he would always be around working. Don Hardy? Yeah. He was a singer? Before and he crook. was. And well, I know, he, I know the crook part. Yeah, I learned, yeah. I've heard he was a crook. Yeah, he was a singer. And then um, when he stopped. <laughs> And when he stopped being a singer, he was an agent and a manager. And then he became a professional crook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's where we're going to start this yeah, video. Yeah, did he have a label, didn't he? Yep, and that's where we'll start this video. <laughs> Play too much wouldn't want to risk being sued by Sharon Osbourne right so you know yesterday I did a video and uh, I had happened to mention in that video about um, Lee Kersley and uh, you know what um, what what happened you know just I, I'm so wound up about this I gotta smoke like a man on this one no filter yeah. So Lee Kerslick, you know, I guess uh, after all these years of not being credited, uh, you know, for his work, and I don't, regardless of whether he got paid or not, who knows? I'm sure he got fucked on his money too, but he certainly did not get credit for his work um, until now. But, you know, the guy's not well. Um, it's kind of one of those things, it's like, well, what are you coming around now for, you know? It's like that relative you never heard of, and then somebody dies, and all of a sudden they show up, you know? I'm trying to find out real quick what's going on with... Woo! Cigarette with no filter. Can't hit those hard. Let's see. It says he's got about eight months to live, according to this article I'm looking for. You know, of course, he was involved with Uriah Heep, and as well as Bob Daisley. And um, Bob Daisley, another one who uh, has had to fight and fight and fight and fight to get credit on his album. Along with, you know, name him off, you know, Jakey e. Lee. Uh, basically, anyone who has ever been involved with Ozzy Osbourne has gotten fucked. You know, and I'm not talking just, okay... Oh, so he didn't get paid what he wanted to. I'm talking being completely fucked. I don't know if you guys... You guys know I'm a huge Ozzy. I love Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, I'm the biggest fucking Ozzy fan out there. And uh, and it pains me to do this video. Um, you know, I, I don't know what Ozzy knows and what he doesn't know. I mean, who, who knows what, what Ozzy's like in real life. But, um, I mean, you guys... Uh, you know, you look what they did to Jakey e. Lee, you know, they he recorded all of his tracks and the day he finished his last track, you can look it up on here, um, on YouTube, there's a video of Jake talking about, you know, the day, the whole time he was looking for his contract, you know, and they said, oh yeah, we're, we're working on a contract and um, the day he finished his last track, Sharon said, oh, here's your contract and he's reading it and he goes, this isn't what we agreed to. And she said, yeah, I know it isn't, but here's the deal. Either you're going to do this, or I'm going to give you a ticket home, and you can get in line and sue us with everybody else. And like Jakey e. Lee said, what was I going to do? You know, you know, what was I going to do? Just take the ticket home and stand in line and sue them? Or go out and get, you know, at least he got to go on tour and, you know, make a name for himself with Ozzy and everything. And I, and I get that. I mean, I... Anybody that has an opportunity to go play with Ozzy Osbourne, you should absolutely grab it with both hands, even if you get fucked, you know, at this point, you know, and, and I suppose even back then, but, you know, in that interview on Jonesy's Jukebox, uh, and I and I haven't even, you know, I've got another interview um, that I used with permission of KLLS, which those guys are great to deal with if you guys ever want to uh, 
look up KLLS in Los Angeles, 95.5. Um, they're really cool people. Uh, and I got uh, permission to do that other... I, I won't put this up because I don't want to see Sharon's face. Um, so I'm not even going to bother going through the process of getting permission. Um, but I thought it was pretty funny because, you know, Ozzy said, well, yeah, her father, he was a professional crook, you know, and I don't know if Ozzy knows this or not. I'm sure he does, but, you know, Sharon Osbourne is absolutely a professional crook, you know. That woman has fucking stolen from everyone. And it's like, okay, so now that Lee Kerslick is on his fucking deathbed, you're going to go, oh, we're going to give you a look. Wait, here's your... Here's your platinum records that we've owed you since 1980. And it's like, well, that's all great. Now why don't you go shove those fucking platinum records right up your twat, you know? Fucking bitch. You know, yeah, okay, now I'm dying. I got eight months to live or whatever. And now you want to give me the credit that I deserved from 1980, you know? Uh, I just want to see what his doctor gave me about eight months to live in his battle with cancer and other ailments. So he has some type of cancer and apparently some other ailments. Um, I, I, I still, and I can't believe me of all people, I haven't got the book yet. I've got to get the book, um, for fact's sake, Bob Daisley's book. And I've also, I have an interview with Bob Daisley on this, on this page where he talks about his book. And the cool thing about it is Bob Daisley, they're his diaries, basically. I mean, it's all there. He, from the time he was a kid, he wrote a diary every day. So um, it's all facts, you know, of, of what went down and, and the Blizzard of Oz band and, and how it all went down and who was there and, and everything else. And it's supposed to be a really cool book, and I'm sure it's fantastic. Uh, I got to get it. I keep saying I got it. I'm going to fucking order it today and get it on Amazon. Um, but you know, Bob Daisley has recordings of Randy Rhodes that he cannot fucking release because Sharon Osbourne has assured him that if he releases any of those recordings, she will fucking sue him until he's penniless. And like he said, I believe her. Now, how she has control of Randy Rhodes stuff, I have no idea. Probably made some kind of deal with the Rhodes family. Dolores Rhodes is gone now, and but her sons Kelly Rhodes and Randy's sisters, they're all still alive. But I, I imagine they made some type of deal with the Rhodes family that, oh, well, hey, we're going to, if you, you know, we would re really like to take care of Randy's estate on the musical side. I'm sure it was some fucking, you know, oh, we're going to take really good care of Randy's music, the, the music side of the estate, and la da 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 And that's probably why... Um, Bob Daisley cannot do anything with those recordings. It's a goddamn shame because there's so many of us Randy Rhodes fans out there who would just love to hear anything. I mean, this is stuff we've never heard, you know, and apparently he's got recordings. And if it's a matter of Ozzy's voice being on there, I'm sure it's a two inch tape with how many tracks, you know, you can always take the whatever you want out of the tracks. But man, this stuff. If there's one person in the music business that bugs the living shit out of me, it's Sharon Osbourne. I mean, it's like, God, you know, so many people, musicians, people who play guitar, I mean, you know, and just love music and, and uh, you know, would just love to fucking, you know, make it big. Especially when I was younger, it was like, oh, I just want to get a record deal and make it big and everything. And it's like, you finally get there and then... In the end, find out you're as broke as you were when you started, you know, yet the person you're working for is, you know, multi-millions of albums have been sold. And I, and I understand that goes on today. You know, that's been going on um, for a long time, especially in like country music. Um, you go on tour with, uh, I mean, you can go on tour with the biggest country artist and, uh, you know, and get paid about 300 bucks a week, you know, even though they're fucking selling millions of it's just, it's part of the deal, you know what I'm saying? But if you record with a country artist, which, you know, most of the guys that are on tour are not going to be the guys recording, you know, you get credit, people always, pre listen, I'm going to give you guys one piece of advice that was given to me 20 years ago. <clears throat> I was always told from the time I picked up a guitar and started recording, keep your publishing. 
Keep your publishing, keep your publishing, keep your publishing. I own all my publishing. And that's because, and who knows, you know, one day your song that you wrote that you completely forgot about it might be used in God knows what, you know, and you need to have control of your publishing. I mean, it's your work, man, protect it. So, you know, it's not not hard to copyright. I mean, you guys, I'm sure you can Google it and maybe I'll do a video about, you know, how to go about copywriting your music and, and stuff like that. But I'm sure there's there's got to be plenty of videos on YouTube of how to go about that. Um, I mean, these days we have uh, places like DistroKid and uh, where you can go and, and do a cover song and, you know, and still um, get credit for your work and, and, you know, share the royalties, whatever. Get uh, permission to use, um, to do a cover song of whatever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Got to get out of that page. Anyway, um. So yeah, you know, I was just I did that video yesterday and I and I mentioned Lee Kerslake and god, man, it's just today I started thinking about it again, it's just eating at me, you know, just just like god. Now you show up, you know, fucking guys on his deathbed. Where the fuck were you 30 years ago or whatever it's been? 1980, what 40, almost 40 years ago? Uh and you just refuse to give this guy credit, you know, just for for whatever reason. I who God knows what the fucking reason is, but and then and then just fuck fuck musicians over your entire career. It's like you know, Ozzy's a multi millionaire. You know, I mean, it's one thing I understand. You know, when you open a business, you know, you're that's your business, and you should protect yourself and and you know make as much money as you can but uh you know you also need to take care of your guys you know and, and make sure they're happy you know and that, i get into other things with that too i have conversations with people about you know how i think like uh like school teachers and stuff the people that are raising our children basically you know i don't really want these people that are raising my children having to think about how they're going to pay their bills and everything you know what i mean but that's a totally another subject. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sharon Osbourne is absolutely a professional crook. Her father was the same way. She claims that, of course, she's just wonderful. Um, Ozzy, you know, who knows? Like I said, I mean, I, I don't even know what Ozzy's mental state, his real life mental state is, you know? I mean, I met him a couple of times, and I mean, he's just like you would see on any interview or TV, but, um, I mean, he always seems kind of out there, but, you know, who knows what he's really knows, and, and really, I mean, I'm sure he knows that, you know, people in the music business fucking despise his wife, and, and everything else, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's terrible to me, man, all these great talents, Jakey Lee, Bob Daisley, Lee Kerslick, Rudy Sarzo, uh, you know, you know, you, you start to wonder about, you know, I wonder if Randy would have lived if she would have just fucked him over too you know so anyway this is what's on my mind you guys let me know down in the comments how you feel about this and uh what you think and i'll catch you on the next video peace out